They love you. <laughs> it's weird because we sit backstage and we talk and then you come out and we shake hands like we never saw each other before. <laughs> um, Mike, I can't tell, I, I, you have to answer this for me because I can't tell if you love or hate the real Silicon Valley. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Maybe 70% love. Wow. No, I, <laughs> it might be more than me. No. I, well, I did, I did work in Silicon Valley, and I think back then it was uh, easier to hate for me as an engineer. But I, uh, easier no, to I hate love back it now. then? What's that? You think it was easier to hate back then just because you were an engineer, Maybe not as so. a whole? Yeah, I wasn't uh, as upwardly mobile in, <laughs> in that world. Um, yeah, it was very, it was very I, I'd say the personalities were similar to now. But um, probably not as much excitement in it. Not as much. Uh, I mean, it was. It wasn't like every single person in the world had a cell phone and a laptop. So it was sort of a more of a niche thing. But it was. It was blowing up a lot slower. Yeah, I mean, like in a way, you're doing something new all the time. You have these new challenges. But being in the valley and for the last few years and watching how all of this works, do you ever feel compelled to start a business of your own? Do you get like entrepreneur <laughs> fever? Yes, I mean, there, there's so many times where we're, you know, we're sitting there in the writer's room and we're trying to come up with fake apps and fake technology. And then sometimes we'll see the fake thing we were doing actually happen. And, and then sometimes we go like, well, why are we here? Let's just go make the apps. Like, but, <laughs> or the- Share or one the, of those ideas. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. We're cheating a little bit. We, you know, we had our character create this compression algorithm that beats everything else. Well, we're not smart enough to do that. So <laughs> we made up a fictional character who does it. Um, but now I think, I mean, well, actually, like in this last season, I mean, it's, you know, we, we immerse ourselves in, in tech and try to talk to as many people as we can. And and then you know we have the advantage that we can make things up with this great compression algorithm he has, but we try to keep it grounded. And I mean, we just keep seeing there'll be something that we're like we're kind of feel like we're running neck and neck with the real tech world. Like we'll like last season we had them starting this um, uh, you know peer-to-peer -peer data storage thing and doing an ICO for it. And then I, you know, I just went to the Decentralized Web Summit um, you know, like a month after the last episode aired. Right. There's companies that are doing that. There's a company that raised over 100 million just with an ICO to do exactly what Pied Piper is doing. And um, so yeah, maybe we should just quit TV and just move up here. And <laughs> Call me, uh, I'll, join, I'll join you. Um, I noticed like in watching the seasons that so much of the plot centers around kind of like the rise and fall of Pied Piper itself, like the growth of the company or the tribulations of the company and the characters don't necessarily grow that much. <laughs> and I'm curious, like, if, is that like a TV series trope where like people want their characters to say the same or is that what you think of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs, that they like focus so much on their company that they forget to grow mm. as people. I mean, off the top of my head, it's probably the, the latter. The, 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 I mean, uh, when we started, we thought, okay, you know, Richard Hendricks is, we set out to, you know, say, like he's gonna, he's got this compression algorithm, it's this lightning in the bottle and He's gonna, is he gonna get corrupted by the success? Is he gonna stay the same? And we kind of didn't know, but we sort of thought we're gonna see him maybe in a Breaking Bad kind of way turn into this evil megalomaniacal yeah, maniacal, um, person. And, and then, but then we, you know, as it goes along, I think, you know, TV shows, you kind of want, you kind of want to see your characters be their characters and not, you know, it's, it's kind of like we call it eating your seed corn. If you start, you know, I mean, classic shows that have jumped the shark, like the Fonz in Happy Days, you know, like he was this badass guy. And then people go, oh, I like when he's not badass and he shows his kind side. And then pretty much there's just only the kind side after a while. And, you know, I think, I think we, we just discovered we wanted to keep the characters. We like the way they are. 
but it's it's fun to throw new challenges at them and you know and we finally had them become very successful and just watch what problems that brings to them <clears throat> well and like one of the things i've been wondering about too is that in silicon valley when you think of like um an exit it's either like really bad bankruptcy or it's like an ipo or a merger and acquisition in either case that's not really the end of the story like yeah coming to the to the close of silicon valley like i don't how do you what does the end look like? I'm not trying to get you to spoil <laughs> I realize that series? that's, but like just take me through your thinking, I guess. Well, I mean, we do, we do have a, we've had a series finale in mind, and, but we've also had season finales in mind each season that we end up not doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I think at some point, um, you know, we're gonna wanna see this company become you know, uh, as big as, maybe as big as the big four. I mean, it seems like that's what you would want to, where you'd want to see it head. And how that finally ends, we have sort of an idea, but I shouldn't say. But we don't know, I mean, I think it could go another couple seasons. Uh, you know, um, HBO doesn't like it when I say stuff like that. Yeah, that, I'm like, that, I mean, well, I mean, I used to HBO say, like, we wanted to end it at six, and then they said, don't say that, what if, what if it goes longer? So, I mean, we enjoy doing it, so maybe we can maybe we can keep uh, dragging it out until he's a gazillionaire. What can you share? One of the season finales that you didn't use? Oh, um, hmm. Boy, that's a, um, I don't know about fina this finales. This is stuff you should know. Didn't use. <laughs> well, the thing is, like every season, we just put everything we have into that season as if it's the last and just worry about the rest later. I mean, we did that the first season. We're just like, every joke, every character we can come up with, it's just like, let's just l make this one as good as possible and worry about the rest later. So, um, God, I, I, I'll have to come back to that we'll one. Circle I, think, back. I think there was one, but I mean, there's stuff that we were gonna do, not necessarily a, um, a, a finale, but like we were gonna have a big, uh, one point there's this thing, uh, femoral. It's like Burning Man on the water. I've heard of that. And we had a read through, we had a script, we were pre-production and then we just realized this episode sucks. Never mind. <laughs> we started over again. Um, there's been a few like that. Who is Gavin Belson based on? There's <laughs> There's not there's not a one to one he's exactly this person, but I mean I think when starting out, I kind of I kind of looked at it like I've noticed there's sort of two categories of billionaires. You know, there's the sort of super almost Asperger introverted programmer type who came to it that way, mm -hmm. and then there's the ones that sort of came to it as more of a kind of aggro aggressive like VC type, and and to me the. Uh, the guy playing Peter Gregory, who unfortunately passed away after the first season, was the perfect of the Asperger type. Gavin Belson was the other type, so I wanted it to be like represent those two types. So I mean, you could put a lot of people in that first category. Uh, you know, Peter Thiel, um, maybe Mark Benioff in the other ones, Steve Ellison, like th th these kind of. Uh, I Mark mean, Larry Benioff Ellison. is so much more likable than Gavin Belson. What's that? Mark Benioff is so much more likable <laughs> than Gavin Belson. Yeah, well, like, you know, you know, we got to exaggerate mean. for TV. <laughs> yeah, um, we did, I mean, actually, we didn't, some of these, like, I didn't really know much about Benioff before the show, and then I kept seeing all these people saying, oh, he's like Mark Benio Benioff, and I guess because we gave him the beads or something. But, yeah. But I, I guess yeah. he's not, you know, not so much. It was sort of just a combination of a lot of people. That is the diplomatic thing to say. <laughs> um, like, okay, so I, I'm sure that you're paying attention to this, perhaps more than the rest of us, but you know, Silicon Valley seems to have come to grips a little bit in the past few years with its influence. Like everybody looked around and was like, do we actually want these things to exist in the yeah. real world? Like, was this a good call? Um, and I'm curious if you think that that is like true self-awareness or if you think this is like a reactionary phase. Oh, <laughs> um, well, I think it's, it's reactionary that led to self-awareness. I think there is some real self-awareness. I mean, I think, you know, be, the, the tech world, 
especially when I was in it, it like the general public didn't know who any of these people are. And for the first time in the last few years, these people are becoming celebrities. I mean, there were, you know, I mean, people knew Bill Gates and Steve Jobs for a while, but now there's, it's just kind of more in, uh, in the public eye. And I think, I mean, I've noticed since we started doing the show, it was the tech world was just extremely proud of itself and very brash and like disrupt we're disrupting this and that and then please don't use our brand yeah you. oh sorry <laughs> i mean you know <laughs> it's a different kind of disrupt uh, the shitty kind yeah this is this disruptive uh but but uh then then i think you know there's definitely i think they felt a little bit of backlash from the public it seems <laughs> especially maybe in just in the last couple of years and kind of like changing their tone a little bit, um, you know, uh, not putting their mission statements out so much. And uh, I, I've noticed that. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I've even heard, I think I, I'm not going to get the quotes right or the people, but, you know, I don't know, people like Roger McNamee kind of saying, hey, maybe we, maybe all this stuff hasn't necessarily always been good for mankind and maybe we ought to think about it a little more. I mean, this decentralized web summit was definitely, I mean, this people saying, hey, you know, the people who created the original internet, those protocols kind of saying, this isn't what I wanted it to be. And we have an opportunity to start over. Let's try to get it right this time. So I think there's some good self-awareness happening. Do you think that, th do you think that Silicon Valley, the show, the fact that you kind of brought all of this, and it was it was coming out on its own anyway. We have like this new wave of tech celeb, right? But yeah. you really honed in on that, and you 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 kind of cast a mirror on us in a lot of ways. I don't even hate to say us, but them. <laughs> <What>? uh, <laughs> we hey. did this. Hey. So <laughs> um, but do you think that that added to the self awareness that that movement in any way, or do you think it was just like the public yelling and screaming? Well, I mean, I've been told it added to the self-awareness. I mean, um, probably shouldn't name names, but some very big, uh, you know, COOs and CEOs have said, you know, watching your show, we said, you know, we've got to, we, you know, stop putting our mission statement out there. Let's just, you know, I don't just, I, I have seen, I think we might have had a little bit to do with yeah. that. I mean, not maybe because of, I, I think partly just because the media commenting, commenting on our show, the tech world itself watching it and kind of going, oh, is that how people see us? Right. Uh, a little bit of that. But I mean, we try to, you know, I mean, of course we make fun of it. I also, you know, like our, our main characters, I mean, I like them and what they're doing. So we're not, I mean, you know, we make fun of them, but kind of, I think the way you would make fun of your friends. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I think, I, I think, I mean, I've been told as much that it, it did have something to do with that. Do you think like the stakes are a little bit higher because like for, for the vast majority of people outside of here in this room, like Silicon Valley is their main window into what the hell Google and Facebook and Amazon and Apple and all these engineers are doing and what they're like. Do you feel like any responsibility to represent? <laughs> or is it just like shit on Silicon Valley? Well, I mean, I think um, I feel responsibility to kind of respect the characters and not, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't feel like it's, let's just shit on Silicon Valley. When there's, some, when there's somebody who, you know, when you have these kind of crazy things like where, um, you know, like, Tom Perkins compared the plight of tech billionaires to that of Jews in Nazi Germany. It's like, it's okay to go after that a little bit. Um, I, I think there's, you know, some things that are good to make fun of, but I don't think it's like a, you know, like a big F you to the entire tech right. world. I, I have huge respect for it. And um, so, yeah. <clears throat> so I noticed in the last season, like the, the kind of the tactic for addressing hashtag me too was the the robot episode the ai <laughs> robot thing and i think that was handled really well actually like i'm curious about why that well the the me too happened what in october and we were already i mean well the tech world has had its me too yeah. for the last <laughs> yeah. we, again yes. ahead of the curve um 
<laughs> we've been going through it for a while. And then Hollywood was like, oh, yeah, us too. Right. Um, <laughs> the us too movement. Um, yeah, um, that was, yeah, that, that was sort of, uh, you know, I mean, because some of that stuff is sort of, ugly and dark and we're a comedy, I think, you know, we had to approach it in a way to just try to make it as funny as possible. And I, I loved that robot stuff. I mean, yeah, it was, uh, is her name Fiona, right? It was, what's that? Her name was Fiona. Fiona. Yes. Fiona, the robot. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I don't, I mean, Zach Woods who plays Jared, uh, just him and that Amazing. robot was maybe my favorite part of the season. And, and, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we had seen some videos of some 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 robots where it looks like, you yeah, know, this looks like maybe <laughs> this is uh well, I mean, every it seems like historically every new technology tends to descend straight into some version of porn. <laughs> yeah. So uh that is yeah, what what it seems to happen. I I'm like I have to ask <coughs> TJ left the show, TJ Miller left the show. Um, that was before there were any allegations against him, but then those did yeah. come out. Like, did you feel in the years that you worked with him that he was a liability? Was that something you were worried about? Uh, I, didn't, I never thought about it in that way, and I'd never heard anything about that stuff. Yeah. To me, the liability was more like just, uh, you know, he's, he's a bit of a loose cannon. And, yeah. I mean, there was one time where we were shooting that robot a uh, bambot from Boston Dynamics and mm -hmm. there's very, you know, rules the like don't kick it in this direction, don't kick it. and I mean he just <laughs> He didn't follow anything. I, I'm rules. I'm thinking like he's not gonna follow anything you tell him and he almost knocked over he kicked it into a lighting rig that almost like that. Yeah, yeah, it's stuff like that. Um was always a little little right. bit uh little bit scary. So but yeah I did I'd I'd never heard about any of that stuff and yeah it's are you worried that um, AI is going to take your job one day? <laughs> I don't know. I've seen some of the scripts AI has written in there. <laughs> I'm not, not so worried good. anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, it's like, um, it's very bad <laughs> right now. I don't know. I mean, I think, I think that's, I think on one hand, that's a lot further away than people think. I mean, when, when I started out in animation, there was a guy, there was a company, um, called U.S. Animation, and, and the person who was the CEO, they were, they were very new then, and he's saying things like, oh, in, in two years, like, you'll draw a butthead once, and you'll never have to draw him again. You'll draw his hand, and you, you, that, that'll be done, and everything will... And it was, I could tell it was just so far away, and they were saying, separate everything on different levels, and just, I remember this Russian animator who's really great, worked on the show and he just said, can't we just draw it, please? <laughs> like, and the technology became way more complicated than just animating and it, and it never worked and it was, just, it was just years away. Now maybe 25 years later, that's getting close. So I think, I think AI though, it's possible that it could just, you know, it's one of those things that could become exponential, but I, th I, I feel like it's a long ways away from that exponential rise. Um. Given like how long you've been in, in the world of television, um, I'm sure you're keenly aware of kind of the fragmentation that's happening a little bit um, and just the evolution of the landscape as a whole. In your opinion, what does television look like in 10 years? Are we buying Silicon Valley a la carte? <laughs> um. The, the show Silicon the Valley? Show, the show, not, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of mad at you because that is annoying. Like every time you write know, about I, the show, I'm like, I don't. I know the same thing happened to me with Office Space where someone's going like, I'm trying to Google to find Office Space and your movie comes up. Um, but I, and by the way, like I didn't, I, I remember saying, you know, in Alec Berg, who, the showrunner, myself, like we were, we were just, desperately trying to come up with a title. And I kept saying, well, whatever it is, we can't call it Silicon Valley. I mean, <laughs> that would that be like well. if we called Entourage Hollywood. That's just the worst name ever. And after going through a hundred different names, <laughs> HBO was just like, can we call it Silicon Valley? But- um, An app but for that. Uh, to answer your question though, yeah, I, um, it's, yeah, it's changing so much. It's all sorting itself out. And mm -hmm. I think, 
Yeah, I, th I mean, I hope it turns into some version of, um, well, we met with Bill Gates actually for the show and he was describing this thing, which I'm sure people here know way more than I do about, but where you have sort of an AI agent online that has all your information, your credit card, whatever, your payment, your preferences, and that thing just goes and shops. You say, I want to buy a jacket, and it skips Amazon, goes straight to the people who make it. You decide if you want to give up your information to get a lower price. And I think some version of that might happen with TV, where you just, it's like, there'll be the people who produce the show. I mean, they'll, I think they'll still be brands, but um, yeah, right now it's a bit of a mess, but uh, it's good for us. I mean, there's a lot of platforms you have a lot of opportunities to make a ton of money too. Yeah, and there's a lot of a lot of spend. Netflix and these. But yeah, there there were. I think I heard there were 450 scripted series shot in North America last year, which is like, I mean, it used to be mm -hmm. 40 maybe, and and so this is, uh, yeah, and a lot of them you don't see, but you know, but. Yeah, there's a lot of money in it right now. Okay, we're out of time, and I'm going to get in a, bit, a bunch of trouble, but we're going to do a lightning round real quick. Oh. Um, you can p skip one of these. Okay. <laughs> Beavis or Butthead? Beavis. Google or Facebook? Google. It's like, which no, Facebook. the lesser evil? Oh, shit, Facebook. <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be a lightning round. I'll yeah, go yeah, faster. Yeah. Recode or TechCrunch? TechCrunch. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. Um, Westworld or Sorry, Game of Kara. Thrones? What's that? Westworld or Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. Hulu or Netflix? Netflix. Uber or Lyft? Lyft. Um, which parties are better, Hollywood or Silicon Valley? <laughs> Silicon Valley, of course. <laughs> You're pandering. <laughs> more material for me. Uh, who are, who's more annoying, Hollywood moguls or Silicon Valley executives? <laughs> Hollywood moguls. And for finally, sure. King of the Hill or The Cleveland Show? <laughs> King of the Hill. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right, big round of applause for Mike Judge. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you.